Hey guys, this is Dal Phoenix, and I figure it's time to do a little vlog. I just finished the campaign for Battlefield 3. It was a game I rented for PlayStation 3. You know, it happens to be pretty much the answer to Call of Duty for anybody that's fed up with Call of Duty but likes military style first person shooters. Um, anyways, I just want to go ahead and talk a little bit about it uh, because I really got a lot to say. Anyways, uh, Battlefield 3 is, you know, of course, obviously a sequel to the first two Battlefield games as well as, I guess, in a way, a sequel to the Bad Company games. Uh, it's kind of more or less the game that ties both of those franchises together. And it offers a new story and everything like that. Uh, basically, um... <sighs> Did I say it's a new game in the Battlefield franchise? Well, now I'm only basing this on the campaign. That's the only thing I've played so far because I rented the game. And EA, of course, is doing their ever popular online pass system for this game. So if you want to play online, you either have to buy the game brand new or pay EA $10 to play the game online. So, needless to say, I paid $2 for my rental from Redbox, and I'm not going to pay $10 just to try it online. Especially, you know, if I like the campaign, well, I probably would buy the game anyways, right? So, um, no, this is not about the multiplayer at all, so I'm not even going to touch on that subject. I, I'll, it, I did play some of the multiplayer during the beta, and it was okay, you know, some of it was good, and... Some of it wasn't, but you know, it was just a beta, so I was willing to look past all that. No, this is about the campaign for Call of Battlefield 3. Uh, that's the reason why I call it Call of Battlefield 3 is because this campaign is tooth and nail a Call of Duty game all the way through. It's uh if, if you like Call of Duty, you're going to love the campaign of this. Even if you don't like the Battlefield multiplayer system, you should at least rent it and play through the campaign if you like Call of Duty campaigns. But uh, this is a cut and dry ripoff all the way through. Um, just just kind of cover it with you real quick. Uh, you play as Sergeant Blackburn, or was it Blackbird? I don't remember. Um, he wasn't exactly a rememberable character even though he's the guy you play as most of the time because he doesn't really have a personality or anything like that, you know, I mean he makes his little remarks and whatever but for the most part he's a you know, a character who doesn't really talk except in the cutscenes in between missions. Um, but anyways, you play as him, he's been arrested by these feds or whatever, I don't know, they're probably with the Pentagon. The game doesn't really talk about these people. But uh, the reason why they arrested him is because he apparently killed his commanding officer um, over in Iran. Which, that's another thing I'd like to mention, you know. Um, that's kind of like an off-tangent. But uh, it seems like all these modern military shooters love to target, like, various countries. Like Iran, Russia, Iraq, Afghanistan, North Korea... You know, any kind of country that is currently or previously hostile with the U.S. I don't know if that's just because they like to base it off of, you know, some real world type events and, and kind of go from a fantasy direction from there, you know, in their own perspective. But, uh, yeah, it's getting a little old. It really is. Uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and talk about Blackbird again, or Blackbeard, whatever. I don't really care. He's pretty much a nameless character, you know, like you would normally see in these kinds of games. Uh, but anyways, uh, these Fed guys, they interrogate him in more or less a manner that is extremely reminiscent of Call of Duty Black Ops. I mean, it's not in a... Uh, station and it's not some guy that's talking to you with a crazy you know effect voice that you can't hear what who, who the person actually is 
Um, it's actually the same thing still, though, because they're more or less interrogating you about your mission and everything like that, and they're trying to figure out stuff about some kind of nuclear, you know, attack. So, more or less, it's the same thing. Um, but anyways, uh, first of all, things that are better than Call of Duty as far as this game, the graphics would probably be the biggest thing I can think of. Um... Now, the graphics weren't perfect, you know, and they're not as good, obviously, as the PC version of Battlefield 3. You know, I know PC gamers are like, oh, you console gamers got the crappiest game and blah, blah, blah. You know, well, I only had to pay $2 to play the campaign, you know, by running it through Redbox on my PlayStation 3. If I wanted to play the campaign on my PC, I would have to pay $60 because there's no rental option for PC. There's no nothing. It's just you buy the game. Or, I guess you can maybe um, play it off someone else's computer or something like that if they bought it. But, uh, not everybody's that fortunate to have such a friend that would be willing to let them play their computer for several hours. Um, and that has a good enough computer to really show off the game in the first place. Um, needless to say, it's in the upper echelon of PlayStation 3 graphics. You know, it's not the best looking PlayStation 3 game because there were some issues with the game, how the game does lighting and shadows. I noticed there was a lot of uh, instances where there was, you know, just real jagged edges with the shadows and uh, I, I, it's kind of hard to describe, you know, I would really have to show you an example of it. But, you know, I, I didn't catch any footage of the game, but uh, needless to say the shadows could have used some work uh, but uh, overall, the textures, the animation, the, you know, all that stuff was really good. And so the graphics, great. They're, they're better than a Call of Duty title. Um, at least any Call of Duty title that I've seen so far. Um, I haven't really seen much about Modern Warfare 3, but I don't really anticipate it being a big step up in graphics, you know, because uh, really Modern Warfare 2 wasn't a big step up from the original. It did look a little bit better, but... Yeah. Uh, anyways, um, so there's the graphics, of course. Um, what else? Hmm. The sounds were really good. The game had really good sound design. Um, I really liked the, uh, way the guns sounded. They sounded very realistic. Uh, you know, they had a proper amount of reverb and echo and everything like that when you're firing, say, inside of a you know, corridor or a room that's really big or outside, you know, the sounds are real realistic um, as far as that is concerned. That's not really a huge surprise, though. Um, I've played several other shooters that had really good sound design. Of course, uh, the Call of Duty games obviously had good sound as well. Not Maybe not as good, you know, but still pretty good. I don't know. Actually, it, in my opinion, probably the best game as far as sounds... Mag, which is a shooter I like a lot. You know, I play that a lot on my PS3. That's pretty much the only shooter I play on my PS3. Um, that game is like one of the only THX certified FPS games out there. So, obviously it's going to have good sound if it's THX certified. Because THX, they are very serious in their design and everything like that. I know not all the sound effects are great. But, uh, overall the sound is really good in that game. So, um, but I'd say this is definitely up there. Um, if not better even, possibly. So, yeah, it's got better visuals, you know, better presentation than Call of Duty. But other than that, it's the same thing, basically. You know, you have your missions in the beginning, which are in an Arab country. You know, in Call of Duty, it was Iraq and then Afghanistan and then who the hell knows with Modern Warfare 3. Um, but uh, in this one, it's Iran instead. So, you know, insert a Middle Eastern country. You know, I'm sure if, like, we see another Battlefield or Call of Duty game, maybe it'll be in Saudi Arabia or Kuwait or Turkey or Syria or Israel or uh, Yemen or, you know, any of those countries. You know, you could pretty much copy and paste whichever one you want from the globe and, and just, bam, you, you, can, you got an instant uh, Call of Duty setting, basically. Um... Which, you know, I mean, I guess not really that, that fair. You know, it's not like Call of Duty was the first game to be based in the Middle East. It's not even remotely close to that. But, you know, I mean, that's pretty much where most of these modern military shooters go. 
You know, now one shooter I kind of liked a lot was Homefront. And Homefront um, didn't use any of those settings. But uh, Homefront was kind of limited too as far as the settings because it pretty much was just chronological order traveling from one destination to another. And um, that, that kind of lacks compared to games like Call of Duty and Battlefield where you see multiple locations and, and the story isn't necessarily chronological you know it kind of skips around a little bit you know it's more intelligently designed as far as the storyline is concerned you know it doesn't really um it's not really as predictable i guess you could say it's still pretty predictable i mean in terms of how a game like call of duty or battlefield compares to a hollywood blockbuster well it's pretty much what you would get from a bruckheimer or michael bay film if they decided to make a military movie of some kind. I, I guess I really need to get to the point, don't I? Uh, so, anyways, we got the beginning that's got the whole Afghanistan, Iran, Iraq, insert whatever Arab country you want into the game. The game, actually, a lot of it takes place in Iran, um, but it does have a lot of settings for that, too. You know, you got uh, your desert settings, like, for the instance, you get to use a tank, in one mission, you also get to use a uh, jet in another mission, which those are pretty cool missions, but uh, pretty much they're the same as you expect from the vehicle missions in the Call of Duty games. You know, they're just kind of a break from the normal shooting action. You know, pretty much uh, in this game, the campaign was probably about five and a half, six hours long. It was about as long as the original Modern Warfare game, a little bit longer than Modern Warfare 2's campaign, at least from my play time. And, um,. You know, it's pretty much just that kind of mission, you know. It, it didn't really add a lot of depth to the game. You know, you actually did technically get to use the tank for two missions, but the second mission was fairly short. You know, you were pretty much just using a machine gun and mowing down some enemies. It was probably less than half of the length of the first tank mission. and They, they were more or less back-to-back, -back. so really it could have been the same mission. It's just that if you wanted to go back and play the missions later, you can skip to that second part, which is kind of cool. And then, of course, the, the plane mission pretty much worked the same way. You had a section where you had some dog fighting, and then you had a section where you did some ground assault and uh, lay some targets for, like, a bomber or something like that to clean house, more or less. You know, it's, it gave you a little bit of variety of everything. Um, it was better than, like, the, uh, well... No, it really wasn't better than the AC-130 mission in Modern Warfare 1 uh, because it was pretty much a gimmick all the way through. You know, at least uh, like with the uh, way that Modern Warfare 1 did it, you know, they had all the various call signs and everything like that, and the conversation that was taking place during that mission was pretty interesting. It kind of kept you engaged even if the action itself wasn't very intense. So, yeah, you had those kinds of missions, of course. You know, that's pretty much it, though. It was just the, the two tank missions and the one jet mission. Everything else was the usual stuff that you expected. Just like uh, Black Ops and its storytelling, the area where you're at, where you're being interrogated, is near the end of the game, actually. So you kind of start off telling events that happened from before, and then, of course, when you get close to the end of the game, the last mission or whatever, I guess you could say, then bam, you're doing whatever to resolve it up to wrap it up basically anyways just a little bit more about the plot uh, blackbird and his team they uncover some plans from a guy named solomon who happens to work with some uh, very unruly people that want to you know cause a lot of ruckus around the world the enemy stole two nukes and they left one behind i guess they are probably planning on nuking a third place but um, they decide to unleash them in Paris and New York. And unfortunately, you know, at this point in the story, you, a after, you know, a few missions, you actually learn that the uh, terrorists were successful in their mission in Paris. Um, so uh, on top of the fact that your guy is, you know, being branded a traitor for shooting his commanding officer, you also have to deal with the fact that... Uh, that they believe your guy is involved in this new 
thing somehow, you know, that, uh, not really him necessarily, but a friend of his, like, uh, an ally of his that you, you know, meet through the game, which that's actually not true, obviously, you know, because that's the way it goes in these games, you know, uh, it, it's pretty much the same as it was in the Call of Duty games, I believe it was in, uh, at the end of Modern Warfare 2, where, uh, Soap, Captain Price, and whoever the other guy is, that Russian guy. I have no idea. It, it actually wasn't that long ago I played the Mono Warfare 2 campaign. I just kind of forgot the specifics of it. But, you know, basically those three guys are branded as traitors and terrorists or whatever because of the events that, the, that happened, even though they ended up saving the day. You know, of course that's how it goes, naturally, you know, because it makes for an interesting story. But there's no character development of any sort. The only real instance of character development that I can even remember is there's this one mission where you're playing as this guy named Miller, and at the very beginning of the mission, it's like the first tank mission, he's playing with this little dinosaur toy or something that's his kids, and he's missing his kid's birthday because of his deployment, you know. That's pretty much it. That's, that's the extent of character development. So, if you like completely static characters that are the same the entire path of the story, this is for you. And, you know, another thing that I was thinking about uh, with the whole character killing his commanding officer, it, it's kind of interesting because with that scene, I mean, this might be a little bit of a spoiler, so maybe you could skip ahead a little bit if you really think it's going to spoil your experience with this game. But more or less, he encounters this guy named Dima, who uh, tells him about what's going on, basically, with the whole plot. He is the one that tells Blackbird basically exactly what's going on. Uh, he reveals exactly what Solomon is planning to do and everything like that. And then he tells him to kill his commanding officer, or else it's going to be over. He basically says, kill this one guy to save millions. Uh, what's interesting about that is, for one, why would that be necessary? <laughs> I, I really don't understand that. You know, they they just gonna was the commanding officer just gonna come shoot the guy or or what? Well, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Another thing I found that was interesting about that whole scenario is uh, if you choose not to pull the trigger on the commanding officer, he'll actually kill you, which makes absolutely no sense at all because he's your commanding officer, and you've been doing several missions with this guy previously, why would he just come up and kill you, you know? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense at all. It's completely retarded. I don't know. Maybe it's try trying to be some gimmick like in Modern Warfare 2, where the uh, officer and that's actually with the bad guys or whatever, but there's actually no revelation whatsoever with that. Uh, there the game doesn't give you anything you know as far as you know the commanding officer is a by-the-book marine you know he plays by the rules you know tries to complete the mission objective keep his team safe you know basically all the stuff that you would expect from a officer on the battlefield you know so um yeah that's kind of interesting another you know the really the game had some frustrating moments that didn't have to be um you know due to some lackluster game design. I remember this one part where I had to, you know, knife a guy. You know, it seemed like a simple thing. You're supposed to sneak up and press the R1 button, which is kind of weird because knife is R2, but it's meant to be a quick time event as well. So anyways, you're supposed to come up and knife the guy and, you know, go from there. You're supposed to be stealthy, but actually in that particular segment, if you're playing stealthy, the guy will either just turn around, shoot you, and kill you. Or, when you're almost there, you'll just fall down dead for no ap no reason at all. I have no idea if it's just some kind of bug, or if it's just the way the event was programmed poorly, um, to where you have to do it in a very specific manner to kill him. No, you actually have to walk up to him instead. You don't duck down or anything like that. You don't do anything to slow down or be more stealthy. You walk up to him, and then when you're supposed to knife him, you're supposed to knife, you're supposed to hit the button a little bit early. 
because if you wait too long, then you'll die. And it's not from him shooting you, it's just you falling down and dying. Uh, and then, of course, when you do the event, the guy ends up shooting his gun, so any sense of stealth is completely lost in that process. Oh, and you can't shoot the guy because the game forces the gun out of your hand, so you're stuck using the knife. So, yeah, I mean, you have some instances like that where the game design is more or less very frustrating you know there's some bad checkpoint design you know this is all stuff that um, I do have to knock the game down for but I can't say that I'll knock it down over similar games like Call of Duty because they have their questionable design too you know not maybe in general but you know they have a few segments here and there in the gameplay where it kind of grinds to a halt for a few minutes you know because of that because you get a little pissed off at these events you know and that's that's pretty much what happens with this so yeah that's pretty much you know that's that's what it is you know it's it like I said before it is a formula ripped straight from the Call of Duty playbook you have the beginning mission in an Arabic country then you have your uh, you know, interrogation or whatever, which, you know, it, it's it's not exactly a mix of, like, one Call of Duty. It's like a mix of Modern Warfare 1 and Modern Warfare 2 and Black Ops. You know, it kind of mixes a little of all three of them and makes, like, you know, another Call of Duty game, basically. Like I said before, several times in this video. I think, well, I mean, I didn't say it specifically like that, but it's more or less that's what I'm implying with this video. As you have it, you go through the uh, typical missions, indoor areas, outdoor areas, night, day, you know, variety of weapons of all types. You know, basically the campaign serves as a tutorial for the multiplayer where you get to try out all the different guns, you get to, uh, you know, see all the different areas where the multiplayer maps are based off of. You know, so you can kind of learn them to some degree while you're playing the campaign before you actually hop into the multiplayer. You know, the typical stuff that you get from these games. It's a very formulaic approach uh, to game design. You know, it's pretty much like the nickelback of uh, first-person shooters. <laughs> Except uh, not as terrible as Nickelback, of course. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much that's that's Battlefield 3. That's the game that is being hyped up so much as being the game of the year, being the Call of Duty killer and everything. When it's really just another Call of Duty, except it's being published by EA and not Activision. There really isn't a lot of difference. I know the multiplayer is different. Like I mentioned, that, that's pretty much the only differences there are. You know, if you like Call of Duty multiplayer, you're probably best off just sticking with Call of Duty. And if you don't like Call of Duty multiplayer, or if you're burnt out, well, Battlefield's probably your game. You know, so that's pretty much where it's going to go down to. I don't think this game is going to have a significant effect on, bat on Call of Duty sales. I think that because of the success of this game, um, it may potentially prevent Modern Warfare 3 from outselling Black Ops. You know, from outdoing Black Ops sales records. Maybe, uh, but otherwise, that's pretty much the extent of it. I could still see uh, Modern Warfare 3 selling a easy 15 million copies, you know. that That's probably going to happen after the first three months, too. So, um, I, I don't see it really have any impact, really, on the sales. It might affect it a little bit, you know. might It might cost that game a couple million of the sales that it was going to probably get if Battlefield 3 never existed. Um, but, uh, and of course Battlefield 3 will do very well as well. It's already sold 5 million copies in the first week of sales, which that's only like, uh, I believe about a million or so shy of what Bad Company 2 has done up to this point. And that game came out, what, about 18, 19 months ago? So that's pretty good. You know, they, um, really have built up a huge fan base. And of course, you know, they built up a lot of hype from the advertising from the game, uh, you know, the game media and everything like that. 
it's just it's not really different it, it you know the multiplayer sure yeah that's different but uh, you know I didn't even have a chance to try it because EA wanted to be dicks about it you know and, and uh, do this online pass thing it really doesn't make a lot of sense you know it's all about because the game publishers they want to cash in on used sales and they easily could in a different manner I don't know maybe uh, they should reward people to buy the game with something else, like maybe give them free downloaded content or something like that, you know. But no, they got to make their 15 bucks a pop for what amounts to like four or five maps that, uh, I don't know, that someone in the modding community probably could have designed in a few weeks, you know, by themselves. So, yeah, it's pretty lame. You know, it really is. Um, you know, I wouldn't mind the downloaded content for those kinds of games so much if they added more stuff than just maps. Maybe new modes, new weapons, uh, new skins for your character, new perks. You know, any of that stuff would be great. But it's just maps. It literally, that's all it literally is. You know, I guess with, like, the Black Ops map packs, yeah, the zombie maps were more than just maps, technically, because they had their own storyline and their own spin and everything like that you know different unique things but uh otherwise yeah the dlc gimmick is totally all about profit you know a lot of these games the downloaded content you have is stuff that's already been finished or uh stuff that they just had to cut out from the end of the game or stuff that they were still working on before they released the game. Maybe it's stuff that could have came with the game if the game got delayed. But no, instead it became downloaded content. Well, looks like I'm just about out of time here. Um, this was quite a rant that didn't make a lot of sense. So, anyways, um, Blackbird or Blackbeard, he saves the day, of course. He keeps New York from getting nuked in a uh, final showdown that smells all too much like a Call of Duty game. Except instead of being out in the middle of nowhere in the desert, it's in Times Square with a whole bunch of people watching you. Uh, so that's the only difference really in this scenario. It actually remind, it reminded me a lot of the uh, ending scene in Modern Warfare 2. Except the Modern Warfare 2 ending scene was a lot better. <laughs> it was a lot more intense. Um, even though both were pretty much the same. You know, I mean, it, it's, it's really stupid. Um, and on another note, um, with the, just to kind of close it off, this is going to be something to do with Modern Warfare 3 and not Battlefield 3. Um, I don't know if you heard about the whole comments about Activision and Microsoft threatening to ban people for getting the game early at Kmart. Um, that's a dick move. You know, if the retailer broke the street date, you should take it up with the retailer. It is not the gamer's fault that they were able to acquire a copy of it early. Um, I remember El Prestor said, hey, reset the stats when the game comes out. That's a good compromise. Another good compromise maybe is maybe you shouldn't have your servers online until the game is ready to launch. Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever thought, hmm, since the game's not going to be released until November 8th, maybe the servers shouldn't be online until then. Well, with that, guys, down Phoenix out.